Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna continue our look at transportation and we're gonna discuss metro and subway. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, this is what we classify as rapid transit. Now, in this, we have basically public transportation and this whole concept is specifically tailored made for urban areas. Basically, it's not like a bus system where even a small village can afford it or a small town can easily afford it. This is something that only densely packed, very high population places uh, can afford it. So and not to mention this supposed to transport a large amount of people now the large i mean is around five to six hundred people per train minimum it can go even higher than that or trains can be much more frequent so this is big thing this is not small this is not like a uh, bus system or tram system this is bees knees in terms of mass transport so why there is a need basically think of it this way whenever you introduce a successful be mindful this is a crucial word successful metro system you reduce what we call economic welfare loss think of it this way people make a certain amount of money and they have certain amount of time you cannot work 24 into 7 into 365 you need to sleep so if your time for sleeping is affected by the fact that you have to go to office that is two hours away uh, that is two hours to go, two hours to come, then you are removing four hours. Now you have to work for a certain amount of hours, like let's say eight hours, and then eight plus four. Now you are uh, realizing that you don't have any time. Now that affects economic welfare. Basically, if the time is so low that you can't spend any money on like, you know, going into the parks, uh, spending movies, things of that nature, everything suffers. And not to mention, you are also angry at that time because you know, nobody loves traffic. So it has a very known tangible, calculatable effect on uh, economic well-being of a city. So if a city is getting very crowded and there is no, um, let's say people are not able to move from point A to point B effectively and efficiently, is you're gonna suffer. And it is a very noticeable thing. And this also has a catalytic effect. Let's say you built a city. Let's say it's a planned city construction and like country is invested a lot of money. From day one, they designed it in such a way that it has a metro system and it's a well implemented uh, metro system. It allows for much higher density. Basically, you can pack a lot more people in a smaller amount of place. Now, is it good or bad? It's very good because this reduces water waste, this reduces electrical consumption, this reduces transportation uh, wastage. So all things combined is a very good idea. So this also allows that. And if you talk about in terms of uh, what kind of land footprint we are talking about, it's very little, relatively speaking. So because uh, buses take the same uh, road as any other, trams also have the same consequences. This, on the other hand, it has completely independent system. For this reason, it has very low to negligible land cost. Now, so how does this magic work? Well. Think of this way, this is no different than in a train and many times this is a train. So all they do is what we classify as exclusive right of way. Now railway tracks are that exclusive right of way. Only railway trains can go through railway tracks and that land is owned by railway. Nobody is going to interfere in that. Metro is like that. Uh, if you see some places where they have a specific lane for bus, which uh, no other vehicle can go, it's more or less the same. That is why metro can run on time because it has exclusive right of way. Now. To achieve this, now you have to understand like land is not infinite. You, how do you gonna achieve this? They uh, generally build what we call grade separation, things of this nature, basically flyovers or tunnels. This is how they can maintain that right of way. Without this, uh, you simply don't have enough land or you have to have a metro system that goes around the city where you can find land for cheap. So. It's not necessary that all your metro will be grid separated or a tunnel. You can sometimes have, you know, going right, uh, you know, across uh, basically a simple road. You can find some places which has this, but generally it's a not a common thing. Now, uh, this is the core reason why metros are so expensive because uh, trams can utilize your roadway, busways can utilize your normal way. These puppies are expensive and they are so expensive they will make a very high speed train look cheap because of this. And be mindful, it's not like a railway also has bridges. This is running on bridges only, like whole distance is bridge and tunnels are even more expensive. So what are the benefits of this? First, it's an electric railway, so it's a very simple optimal. Like you uh, being electrically driven has a one very crucial advantage. Let's say you are running a bus operation and your city is happy, everybody is happy, but petrol prices go up or diesel prices go up, you have to change the ticket prices, which people will not like. This causes a kind of chaos effect. In this, you can control it because uh, electricity does 
it comes from multiple sources generally it's a uh, much more let's just say price stabilized it, the price of electricity does not fluctuate and it fluctuates over a very long time so to give you a context of this when i was a child i was paying upwards of two rupees uh, per unit of electricity now it's six now that's a three time uh, price hike but in during that time petrol has went multiple times up so uh, for this reason electrical railways are kind of stable then we come uh, to the very interesting part is that it has ludicrously low per head cost let's say you want to use the metro the amount of money you will pay would be minuscule like even a bus is more expensive compared to a uh, metro system even a monthly pass is cheap and uh, this really helps large amount of people to use it this system does not discriminate whether you are uh, like you know ceo or uh, basically clerk so this low uh, per head cost helps large amount of people to take the advantage of it now in terms of environmental impact because you have to understand this is allowing a larger population density to be packed into a small area what will happen if this system is not there flat out uh, nightmare let's just say nightmare in terms of carbon emission in terms of uh, time wasted in terms of anger management issues is just better the system is just plain better so these are the pro of it like if you want uh, people to live healthily environment to be healthy and people to have something that they can afford this is awesome now if if everything is uh, so dandy that means there are some consequences undeniably so now the biggest uh, consequence of this is that it's a non recoverable heavy capital cost what does that mean think of this with the amount of money a city or a, what we call municipality invested into building this that's never coming back so let's say there is a uh, 100 million dollars spent for making this yeah that's never coming back now you might be like uh, what is that ticket for if it's never coming back then why do we have to pay it for ticket ticket is only there to run uh, you know allow for expansion allowing for uh, primary reason why we have ticket is uh, simply to maintain operating and maintenance cost basically whatever we have to spend in order to maintain it must come from ticket so if you ever see your city is being hesitant to like hey let's not build a metro here that would be the core reason for it that money never comes back it's not like road or anything like that it never ever comes back hong kong uh, has uh, some uh metros that are successful and their ticket income is 102% his deal they have to run like that for few thousand years to recover the initial cost the 102% is pretty awesome that simply means they have they can maintain the tracks very efficiently they can pay their employee everything is nice and dandy but be mindful almost every place else is running on deficit they basically take away from uh, tax now you might be like okay if it's that uh, like you know money drain why do people build it i already specified like your city suffers if it's not there and city will give you a much wider tax bracketing if let's say you have a good successful metro because of indirect revenue people can afford this sort of system now um, when you are building this now this is the final nail in the coffin for metro system is that you need foresight like you need to know where people will be in india recently many like earlier we had only delhi and calcutta calcutta was the first now after that many other places also joined in now many of them are suffering very serious consequences be it bangalore be it uh, other places like that simply because the train stops are not lining with the public demand basically people needed train stop here the train stop is there then what's the point so this needs uh, basically you need to know before and before you build uh, basically a metro station that either people going to be there or not because the, many times people are like ah, let's just move it by 1 km that area is cheaper and you know it will reduce the cost but here's the nobody wants to go that extra kilometer why they might have a bridge or they might have a choke point like a, a congested ro- roadway or people simply might not want to cross that one extra kilometer now if you think this is complicated yes it is like it is ludicrously complicated to find a place where to put a you know your metro station and even in underground situation you you can't just <laughs> drill everywhere so this requires a very serious amount of study in terms of population management on top of that it's um, the in terms of ridership the amount of people needs to use this is ludicrously high because i already told you you're never going to get make uh, the money back that capital cost but running cost should be recovered that is also very difficult because it requires thousands and thousands and thousands of people using it per day so this is the biggest problem in this like even if let's say you built everything would you have people in that scale moving every day 24 into 7 like not 24 into 7 but at least uh, during the rush hour from early morning to late night at least for that long to have a system where people are moving in large volumes 
So you can see this is why you don't see Metro everywhere. It's ludicrously expensive. The money is never coming back. The even the running and maintenance cost is also barely recovered. On top of that, you need to know where people are gonna be beforehand before you build your metro station and all that, which sometimes can uh, be very easy. Other times it could be very difficult. And you need to have thousands and thousands and thousands of people over, uh, you know, using it every day. So that's why many times you will see metro station, hey, I think it's working, people are there, but here's the deal. you may only see hundreds of people when they were targeting for thousands of them. And that means they're gonna lose money. Basically, they will not even have enough money to do maintenance. So these are the consequences of it. So this was my small presentation on Metro system. I hope you understand uh, why Metro is not everywhere. Now I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment on my video. I reply to all of them. And please subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.